I'm Batman. Hey, uh, what's up guys? It's Steve DeCasa here. I'm doing another uh, filmmaking tutorial. And uh, as you can see, uh, my assistant today is Batman. I'm Batman. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, this is going to be a tutorial about, this is basically just filmmaking 101. And it's going to be about just tips and techniques and what you need to just have really good audio. Now we're not talking about an interview setting, which is kind of like what I'm doing right now. I have on a lavalier microphone, it's wireless. Um, what I'm talking about is, is film, you're on set, you got a script, you're, you're worth actors, you're gonna need a boom mic and uh, a boom operator and uh, you're gonna get the microphone as close to them as possible. You don't want your actors to have to wear uh, lavaliers. There's a quality difference in the uh, in the sound. Um, actually, lavaliers are actually too good. They stay. They get rid of the room tone really a lot. And when you're uh, on set with a uh, with an actor, you want to get the sound of the reverberation off the walls. And if like you're shooting in like a dungeon or something, you want that kind of room tone. So it's best to use a boom mic and a boom operator for situations like that. So, but for this tutorial, there's a few things. It's going to be one on a budget. So I'm going to tell you exactly the the, the basic things you need. And uh, n number two, we're using a D HDSLR uh, camera. I know this tutorial is going out to Darth Xboxian. He's a, a, a subscriber of mine, and he just got a Canon 60D. Cool choice. But these cameras, this, the, the era that we're in of HD DSLRs, there's a lot of um, limitations. For one, the sound recording sucks. So you have to go back to a, a time just like what I was learning in film school when I was shooting on film, where you record the sound separately. So that's called double system. So your system, you have one system for visual, you have another system for sound. So this is separate system uh, recording and here are the things that you're going to need. The basic things that we're going to need are number one, obviously your microphone. Um, today we're using a Rode NTG2. I borrowed it from my friend. It's about $280, which is kind of expensive, but I've seen cheap microphones online for about 150 bucks. It's about as cheap as you're going to get for good quality audio. Next thing, XLR cable. Cheap, 13, 14, 15, you really want to spend some money, you can spend like 30, 40 bucks on it. But you can buy a cheap one and if you keep it well maintained, you will have it for a long time. And a great way to keep your cables well maintained is to check out my tutorial on how to wrap your cables, most important thing. So check it out in the link right here and take care of your cables. And the third thing you're going to need is a recording device the actual recorder. And the thing I use is called the Zoom H4n Handy Recorder. It's very popular among the HD DSLR crowd. Um, it's very easy to use. And this tutorial right now will be sort of a basic tutorial on that just because you need to learn how to, how to use it. But I'm not gonna go crazy in depth. You can buy it and read the manual. That's about 300 bucks. So right there, 300 for the recorder, 150 for the uh, microphone, and 15 bucks for the XLR cable and you're just about under $500. Um, if you needed some other things, you could have a boom pole, but you can always sort of fashion a boom pole out of um, whatever you have. I've seen people use light stands to make a boom pole, a broomstick with duct tape. You know, you, on a budget, you have to make some sacrifices, but if you have some extra money left over, definitely pick up a boom pole, and if you have even a little bit extra money left over, you might want to pick up a slate, which is also called a clapboard. It's a thing that you write scene one, take two, you know, all that stuff on director, camera, all that stuff. It's good to have, but you don't necessarily need it. Um, because in the day and age we live in, we're not using film that has no audio. We're using HD DSLR cameras that have their own audio. It sucks, but it has its own audio. So you can literally, my tip for that would be verbally say it and use your hand to clap, and then you use the audio from the recorder and from the camera to sync that up later. Uh, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. So now that you know exactly what you need, the next thing I'm gonna tell you is basically how to physically use the equipment that you have, the little ins and outs of everything. So we're gonna get to that. After that, we'll be actually in set using it and that's where Batman will come in handy. So I guess we can get right. I'm Batman. Yeah. All right, getting to know our equipment. First of all, here's the microphone. This is the Rode NTG2. As I mentioned before, uh, I'm borrowing it from a buddy of mine named Aram. Uh, he put a little piece, of, he put a couple of strips of gaff tape here for the, um, for reasons unknown. I think so it'll fit into the um, the mic holder, I guess, that he has. But uh, we don't need that right now. Uh, it also comes with the beautiful Rode windscreen. Uh, I like to call it the condom. <laughs> 
But uh, and I'm, I have a tip with involving this that I'll get to in a minute. But uh, very standard. Uh, you have your XLR input here. I believe that's the male or the female. I guess that's the male since there's pins. But here is the most important thing when it comes to microphones. There's something called phantom power. Now some microphones, basically these type type of microphones need power. Um, you can see they're actually perfect size to fit a AA battery. So usually right down here, if you unscrew it, a little compartment comes out, and this is where you put your battery. So I have right here a lithium battery. I use lithium batteries. They last forever. They're amazing. They're a little bit more expensive, but you don't ever really have to worry about them. You put them in at the beginning of the day, and if they run out by the end of the day, you're really overusing your stuff. So lithium is where it goes. Um, lithium is where it's at, is what I mean to say. So let's put it in there. With this particular microphone, there's no on switch. Once you put the battery in, it's on. So be careful. You could be draining it. So when you're using it, it's going to be uh, using up power. The battery's in it. You don't need phantom. What phantom means is when you get your device, which is right here, we'll get to that in a minute, uh, your device will be powered either by a plug or whatever, what phantom means is you use the device to power the mic. That would be phantom power. If you don't need phantom power, you turn it off and the mic is powered under its own uh, batteries. So that's that. Now here's a great little tip. Uh, you'll see this come in handy later. Put your windscreen on. Actually, we'll do this without the mic for now. So take your windscreen and right at the tip here, grab a piece of small gaff tape, preferably colored. Actually, it has to be colored. A bright color would be perfect. So what you want to do is take the gaff and tape it right along the edge of the microphone. Right along the edge here. So the edge of the gaff tape is right at the edge of the mic. You see that? Now this will come in handy a little bit later when we go back to talk to Batman. And you'll see why. You'll see why. So let's put that on. Beautiful. Next is uh, pretty simple, our XLR cable. Here it is, pretty cheap, pretty awesome. We got a uh, male on one side, female on the other side. Pretty good. See how beautifully this is wrapped? Once again, check out the cable wrapping tutorial to learn how to wrap it beautifully like this. And now we have the Zoom Handy H4N recorder. Love this guy. So uh, as you can see, here are some buttons on the front. Let me just go through everything for you. There are three modes on this. There's the stereo mode, the four channel mode, and MTR. Um, stereo mode is what we're gonna be doing. If you wanna know anything about the others, please let me know, but we're gonna be on the stereo mode. Um, you've got play, pause, record, stop, uh, next back, next forward. These are the two inputs down here. You got mic, which means these mics up here, uh, which we're not gonna talk about today and then one and two. These are uh, extra buttons, a uh, folder. This usually talks, uh, you know, there's, I don't know. This is for other stuff. You don't need to know, blah, blah, blah. On the side here, we got remote, so you can have a remote start. Um, you've got the um, mic, uh, headphone jack. You got the headphone jack right here. Your headphone volume, uh, USB to connect to the computer, and the, um, you know, power switch. So let's turn that on. I'm just gonna hold this down. It's gonna start up. And while that's starting up, let's flip it to the other side, take a look what we got. We got the SD card input. I have an eight gigabyte uh, SD card. This is our record level, very important, kind of ergonomically designed. Uh, our menu, very important, and our scroll wheel, which is also a select button when you push it in. Uh, it's still, still loading. Oh, here we go. So here's a few things on the front that I'm gonna show you too, and I'm gonna zoom in on it. So right here, it's got our time code data. I'm just gonna make sure that goes. We've got our time code data. When we start to roll, it's gonna do that. This right here is our um, quality setting. We're at 96 kilohertz and 24 bit uh, at a, w, a dot .wav or a WAV file. That's the highest quality this will record, 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. This is our file name. I have the file name set to the year, the, the month, and the day, and then 001, 002, 003. There's a way to do that in your menu. Please read the menu to find that out. Um, and yeah, so that's our display. Here's our, our battery power. Here's how much audio, here's how much time we have left down here. D depending on the quality you're recording at, this will change. Um, and then we have left and right tracks. Uh, we've got nothing plugged in right now. Let me show you as well. This is the um, inputs on the bottom, uh, left and right. 
Uh, it's a, odd if you've never seen this before, but it's an XLR input as well as a quarter inch input. Kind of like one of those big, looks like a big headphone jack, if you've ever seen those. Kind of like an instrument cable if you play guitar. And the power, right down here, it comes with a plug when you, when you get it. Um, so yeah, let's talk about uh, the settings we're going to use on this. So inside, we're going to go into the menu. Um, what folder is, is folder just tells you where all your files are going to be, files are going to be stored. I'm in folder one. It's loading that right now. Uh, file determines, well, these are to access the files that we had. So far, I have two files recorded in here from when I shot the stuff in the living room. Um, and then input would be uh, lots of different things you have here. Um, the two things you might want to talk about before, as I was mentioning with the microphone, is the phantom. So in the input settings, if you put a battery in your phantom, uh, it can be off. If you, if you want to go phantom power from your microphone, you can, gonna, you can go with 48 volts, 24 volts. You pick the one which works for your, your microphone. Um, the other thing you might want to do, if you're only having one channel, this is a cool thing you can do is mono mix. So when a mono mix is off, when you plug in the uh, microphone into just one channel, let's say we plug it into channel two, uh, only channel two will be going. But if you want to do a mono mix, maybe you just want you know stereo sound, you put the mono mix on, which would be back to input, mono mix, put it on, and the input will be, you'll get, you'll get uh, both of them going. So, what else? Let's see. We got the menu. Record. What's record? So, okay, yeah, record format. So, like I said, I'm doing uh, WAV, 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. We've got lots of different settings. Um, if you know you're going to be doing something for a really long time, you wanna put, might want to put it on a, a, a lower quality, you get longer record times. I'm just going to hit the menu button to cancel. Auto record, all this stuff. File name was, like I said before, file name was the date. You can also change it to just the default, but I like to have it on the date so I know when things were recorded. Uh, I'm going to go back to the other menu here. Tool, you don't really need to know about that. Play mode, you don't really need to know about that. System, just, you know, little different things. So let's go back in here. System, SD card, just kind of, uh, you can format it, which means delete. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, USB is when you hook it up. Mode is to change it to stereo, four channel, MTR. You don't, we don't have to know where to worry about that now. We'll do stereo. And that's about it. So there's all the menus. If you missed anything, please go back in the video and watch. And uh, all right, let's plug in our microphone and uh, give it a whirl. So here we are. We've got our three most basic components. The uh, zoom is turned on. So let's plug it all in. So I actually still have my battery in here. So we're going to keep that in there for now. Uh, we're going to plug in our microphone here. Plug in, we'll, we'll plug it in channel two. Beautiful. All right. Now let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, now here's how to operate the zoom when the microphone is plugged in. So, first thing you do is um, you tap the record button. The record button will blink. When it's in blinking mode, you're in like a pre-record mode. And you can see here, it's definitely picking up something. So it's at this point, while we're in blinking mode, where you want to adjust your record levels. So you want to go into rehearsal, get Batman to talk. I'm going to put the microphone near my mouth. Check, check. So you want to have him do the scene. Ready? So we're going to say, we're going to say something like, I'm Batman. Right? I'm Batman. Now you notice down here, let me zoom in some more. Sorry, let me go back to the beginning here. I'm sorry. So I have the microphone right near my mouth again. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. See how it's, 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 it's getting up there. It's getting up to about uh, the zero point. It's pretty high. I like to keep the, the, the high. Basically, you want to see, you want to get the, the actor get a little loud. Once he gets a little loud, you want to keep that around the negative six point, um, just so it doesn't peak. When you're recording audio, the last thing you want 
is for the audio to peak. You do not want the audio to get too loud. You can never, I repeat, you can never bring down audio that's too loud. It will distort and it will become overmodulated. So, in fact, let's record it right now. So, I'm recording. I'm now, in the tutorial, I'm switching from my lavalier mic right now to the boom mic right here. So, check it out. I'm going to talk a little too loud and you're going to see how bad it sounds. I'm Batman. I am Batman. Now I'm just going to talk using my own voice. I'm not going to use a Batman voice. Batman voice is not good to use here. Check one, two. Now I switch back over to, I switch back over to um, the lavalier. So now did you hear that? You hear how distorted it was? If that's the case, if you have your record settings too hot, you're never going to be able to bring it back down and have something usable. But if it's a little too low, if it's negative six, if it's maxing out at negative six decibels, which is the measurement of sound, you can always bring it up a little bit. You can always add gain, but you can never get rid of overmodulation. So once again, let's, uh, let's, let's do another test. So over here is the record level. So check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. See that? I brought my record level down. Check one, two. And we're maxing out at negative six. So let's record that. I'm Batman. That's right. I'm Batman. See that? Now let's actually switch over to the boom so you can hear it. Ready? And now we're in the boom right now. I'm Batman. I am Batman. I'm Batman. So, uh, there you go. So, Basically, that's it. I'm back over to my lavalier now. Basically, that's it. You want to move the record level up, the record level down to compensate. You want to max out your loud, the loudest the actor will get. You want them to hit negative six. That's my personal, that's my personal tip. So, I'm trying to think of anything else, but I think that's pretty much it. Oh, when you're done recording, don't hit the record button again. When you're done recording, hit the stop button. That's how to stop it. Um, that's about it. The only th other thing you need to know is, uh, basically, to get the stuff onto your computer, connect, uh, it comes with a USB cord, you, can, you connect the USB cord to your computer, um, it'll mount on your desktop as a little icon, it should say like H4N, and you just basically, you remember the folder number, remember um, when we go to folder, we pick folder one, so inside the, the, eight, the icon on your computer, there'll, there'll be all these folders, go to full folder one, all the files will be in there. So if you wanted to say you were doing another scene, you finish scene one, you could put all, this, you could put all the audio of, of uh, scene two in folder two. And that's how that would work. So I think it's about time we get on set and we talk to Batman. Ooh, one more thing before I go. I wanna show you, I actually was able to acquire a boom pole from my good friend Aram. So here's how the boom pole works. Um, you have this little guy up here, or you have something similar usually. And you just kind of, pretty simple. Now let me move this out of the way so you can see. So you just kind of squeeze this guy in here, kind of like this. Make sure it's not plugged in. It's a lot easier to do when the microphone cable is not plugged in. Um, I would also suggest not unscrewing the mic to put the battery in um, unless you're unplugged. So pretty simple, it's in there. In this particular one, you can turn this and, and tilt it, which is pretty cool. Um, these little guys down here, if you want to know, uh, pretty cool stuff. You don't have to be too aggressive with them. Just loosen them a little bit and then you can extend them and then tighten them a little bit. And here's a really good trick if you do have a boom pole. So here's your recorder, here's your, your cable here. Here's a good trick. Plug this guy in. Let's plug him in. Sorry. Come on. Come on, baby. There we go. Plug him in, and it's hard to show you here, but uh, a good thing you can do is, if you have a rubber band or something, you can rubber band um, the cable to this part, you know, just rubber band it, you don't want to do it too hard. And then, really awesome thing you can do to get the wire out of your way is you kind of just twist the cable around. Now I'm twisting the boom pole just kind of guiding the cable around. So 
and you just do that all the way down. So you can be kind of far away from your, um, you can be kind of far away from your subject and there's going to be no cable going anywhere. Uh, don't do it too tight. You don't want to mess up your cable, but uh, you can see you can get really, you can get in there and it's a great, it's pretty much the standard thing you do. There are actually some really awesome boom poles, really expensive, that actually have a built-in XLR input on the bottom down here. So you actually just plug the cable into the bottom and then there's another one up top here coming out and you just need a tiny XLR to go right in. If you want to spend the money on one of those, that's pretty awesome. But uh, you know, treat your cables, treat all your equipment really well so that you don't um, you know, dent them or damage them anyway. Okay, let's get to Batman. So here we are on set. I'm using my iPhone actually to record the second camera and right over here we got Batman. Yeah, he's Batman. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is, and here's a really great tip, this is where the tape on the, uh, the boom mic is going to come in handy. First thing you want to do is you want to what's called get your frame. So what you do is you bring your, here, here you have your actor and you have a nice shot set up. You bring your boom mic all the way down right next to the guy. And then you keep going until the boom mic is just at a frame. Then you kind of keep that in your mind and you, the boom operator will remember that spot and always keep the mic right there so that the boom mic is as close to the subject's mouth as you can get. Because we're not using a lavalier, we're using a boom mic, you gotta get the, the best way to get best, the best way to get clear audio is to get the microphone as close to the subject as possible. So the best way to do that, like I said, is bring in the boom mic and get it just out of frame. So one, once it's j just past the edge where you're, you know, flirting with the edge, that's where you need to be. Sometimes, some situations you need to go lower down like this because, I don't know, you might be shooting really close to a ceiling or a light or something. But um, from what I learned in school, they say keep it up top if you can. Maybe if you ask more sound operators, they can tell you why up is bad. I don't know, maybe you'll get airplanes in the background. I, I really don't know. So once you get your frame, that's when you can tell your actor to rehearse, have your actor do a few lines, have him say, uh, say a couple of lines. If, they, if you know he's gonna be yelling, you wanna you know, have him just get to that volume. And then you adjust the handy recorder as necessary. If it's too low, bring it up. If it's too loud, bring it down. And remember that negative six area is where I like to keep it. So after you get your levels set, the next thing you wanna do is roll the audio. So the director usually says, roll audio. Um, the audio will be rolling. At that point, you'll say, out loud, scene one, take one, whatever it is. If you have that slate, that's where the slate comes in. Bring it right into the camera. You say it, scene one, take one. Then roll camera. Camera will roll. And if you have the slate, the camera will visually see what's there. You slate it and you're good. But if you don't have the slate, you wanna roll the camera at the same time as you roll the audio so you have the audio slate on the camera as well as on your separate system. So roll audio, roll the camera, scene one, take, take one, get the clap in there. You don't necessarily need to see the clap because if you check out my uh, How I Sync Audio, I usually, I usually use the audio hit. When that clap hits, it's usually just one frame. So I grab that, grab the, grab the, the one frame from the audio, grab the one frame from this, the video, put them together, and it's pretty much dead on. Um, so after you're synced up, audio and camera, that's when you say action. So once again, get your boom in, get it just out of frame, slate, scene one, take one, make a clap noise, director will say action. I'm the savior of this city, and the savior of your Final Cut Pro and filmmaking problems is Steven DeCasa. Trust him like you trust me. Well, that's it. Think we did okay, Batman? I think we did okay. So, take these tips and techniques, take what you've learned, and make some awesome stuff and show them to me. And also, if you need any help syncing up the audio afterwards in Final Cut, I have a tutorial for that as well. Uh, you can check it out right here. And please, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, any other things about DSLRs, about filmmaking, about you know what I would do in a situation, please let me know. Um, I'm Steve DeCasa. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and happy filmmaking.